We are back after a week hiatus. Did you miss us? Yes, I hope you missed us and look how tan I am. Because we missed you. Marva spent the whole week on a tan in bed. No, normally I wouldn't, but Joe went away for business. So I was <laughs> all by myself. So I got to do everything I like to do, eat Indian food. And yes. I went to the tanning bed, which is socially inappropriate and really not good. But I needed vitamin D and it was shitty weather here the whole week. That's all right. You know, once in a while, it's not the end. And I went for a foot massage Ooh, for an hour. Nice. I got my meaty little calves rubbed. Oh, I love that. I got to do everything I want to do. I ate non-dairy ice cream in my bed with chocolate syrup with Ooh, Bella. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I you have been I know it doesn't sound that much. exciting, but for me, that's very exciting. Oh, and also, I just want you to know, I went to the new Sweet Green here in my house. I got to oh, eat a salad by myself. Wait. Wait, where is Sweet Green? In Hackensack, Riverside, Cornwall. Oh, yes. I went to so Sweet excited. Green. I really did a lot of stuff on my own. I can't wait good. to make myself a $50 salad. I know. It's so I good. Do, that's the problem when you go to those make your own, though. You put in all this stuff, and then you get to the end, and they're like, that'll be $180. I know, I know, but it, it just feels so good. So I did the Sweet the sweet green. I'm glad. Do you, you feel rested? I d well, I was up a little bit late because it was stormy out, I yes. guess. And that's good because today's episode, we have Ted Gibson and Jason Beck. They are tycoons, icons in the celebrity hair, fashion, yes. editorial And I just want you to know, that was, that was my hairstylist. I've always been very into beauty and glamour, even before I was on TV. I just want you to know that. And I'm a known hairstylist stalker. Yes. Celebrity hairstyle stalker. And when somebody became famous and celebrity hairstyles were happening, I would always have to go. And Ted Gibson was my celebrity hairstylist before the March was famous. I can attest to that. And you very much value self-care and beauty as self-care. Yes, You've never seen yes. the March with a chipped toenail. No, you've never seen me with a chipped toenail or nail. Oh, yeah. Fact, not a broken nail or toenail. If I if I have that, I will rush right to the salon. The roots don't get Dirt. out of control. Yes, I never have really dirty roots. There's no waxing issues here. No. No yeah. full grown seventies mm -hmm. bush, but Ted Gibson. I just want you to know, I had uh, I had my business. I had a business publicist at the time, and she said to me, "Ted Gibson's the hottest hairstylist. I must go." I weaselled my way in, and then I went to I went there. I got the best haircut of my life, my first most amazing shag, um, and then I went to pay the bill. It was nine hundred dollars. Yeah, well, he was the top most expensive haircut in the United States at the time. That's right. I didn't know until I got to the front desk. <laughs> I paid it with um, a smile on my face, and then I left the building and almost fainted. That's okay, but you looked great. And then I you looked amazing, and I went back. And I went back, back. back yes. for Because I was like, back. you know what? Because that's it's how worth every you. penny. And we're still friends to this day because. He went on to do, he, he had uh, more salons and he was so busy. He didn't always have time for Marge. So some of the other yeah. people in the salon would do my hair. And he was, he just got so famous and so amazing that we well, remained also friends. He was doing TV. He was also doing a TV, TV show. He was traveling to Paris. He was doing Broadway. He was doing fashion. Creating products. Yeah, he was just, and then he wound up moving. He closed the salon on Fifth Avenue, moved to LA, and we're going to hear the whole story. But he just started this amazing foundation called Worth Up Alliance. And I just want you guys to hear him and his husband's story, Jason Becky. It's it's unbelievable. I just can't wait to hear everything. And I had to wash my hair six times because I turned it blue and I was embarrassed to go in front of Jason Becky, a major celebrity yes, he's, colorist. He's, he's, my he's, messed up hair yeah, color. his husband's the most amazing colorist and he's the man behind the man also who just, he's just unbelievable. You're going to die. Partners in crime. Partners in crime. <laughs> Hi, gorgeous man. Hi. You guys look great. You look How fat. are you? you I haven't seen you forever. Wait, are you How come I don't have this skin? Look how great your skin looks. Oh my God. My skin, my skin is good though. I went, I did the full blown cancer coffin, which I normally wouldn't do. I went to the tanning bed. You did? Yeah. I normally wouldn't do something so sick in the head, but I did it. Well, sometimes <laughs> a girl, a girl has needs, honey. Just do because, it. Exactly. Yeah. I need a vitamin D. So it's so shitty. Wait, are you guys in California or New York? We're in California. We're in Hollywood, girl. Hollywood. Ooh. You are, you are so Hollywood. You are so Hollywood. <laughs> First of all, I so appreciate you doing this, guys. Are the ultimate entrepreneurs, so superstars, so and so. Well, you know, it's serial. Yeah, serial, serial, for better or worse. Oh my it's serial. We can't help ourselves, right? That's what I say about me too. I mean, I've only reinvented myself a thousand times. Yeah. Well, it's feeding the beast. What the more you do, the hungrier it gets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm so excited that we Thank have Ted Gibson and Jason Backey here today because I know you guys for, literally forever. 
in my, in my uh, what well over a decade Ooh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah which is a little scary in my first life when my my first publicist told me to go to ted gibson to get my hair done he does the superstars and margaret josephs and i said absolutely so i went there fell in love and Ted was doing Everybody Runway, and Jason was doing every photo shoot and runway as well. And I, it was just amazing. And I watched your career grow. And obviously, I went on to do crazy things and get yes, a new husband did. and all the nonsense. And we watched I'm each around other. For all of that. You were around for all of it. Joe was there. <laughs> Joe loves to talk about his every haircut. He was like, oh, I never saw anything quite like it. One person was massaging my hand. You were cutting my hair. <laughs> <laughs> You witnessed it all. Um, well, you know, they always say that if a woman changes her hair, she's looking for a new man. It's true. And you gave me my first good shag haircut, and you gave me my best shag I ever had. That's but, really li literally, I, shag, I had a lot of good shags, but you gave me my best shag I ever had, and it was absolutely amazing. And that's when you, I think, you had first started your first hair care line. Yes, it's was first true. starting. Yeah, Yo. that was the, the Ted Gibson line that we launched first um, with two products at Henry Bendel, mm -hmm. and then we ultimately grew it to 34 or 36 different SKUs in a thousand doors of Target. Um, and we were talking about it yesterday, like the timeline in that moment seemed like years and years, but in hindsight, it was like two years. <laughs> it was like two years we did all that. And then that, is that, that takes a lifetime normally for normal people to grow, but you guys yes. did it in two years. We were on fire. We were on fire. And I think the part of the reason why is because of, you know, women like you who came to the salon and really believed in what we were doing and made such a huge difference for us. And then also the whole idea of how the celebrity, you know, I was a, I was a um, fashion hairdresser. I didn't want to do celebrities. I only wanted to work on really, really, really incredible women. And it ended up being where models were still on the covers of magazines. It turned into celebrity. I didn't want to do celebrity, but I needed to in order if I wanted to do any more covers. So this one pivotal moment um, of listening to Lucy Sykes, who was the fashion director of Marie mm -hmm. said, Ted, I have this opportunity. I really think you should do it. She said, it's doing a cover with a celebrity. I'm like, I'm a fashion hairdresser. I do not want to do celebrities. She said, no, you have to do it. It'll change your career. And I said, okay, well, what is it? She said, well, it's going to be in London and Marie Claire is shooting in the morning and Cosmopolitan is shooting in the afternoon and Patrick de is shooting it and it's Angelina Jolie. And I'm like, who? <laughs> 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 and she said, it's Angelina Jolie. And I said, okay, I'll do it. So I went, it was a love affair. We shot that day. It changed my career. And why I say that is, is because those people who are entrepreneurs, it's really important for all of us to really figure out trusted people that we have in our corner that we know that we can go to, to give advice, to coach us in the right direction, to give us energy when we need it, to support us as entrepreneurs. That's what we need. Yeah. So if I didn't listen to Lucy, I wouldn't be here today. It's wow. funny because we yeah. have, uh, we have a friend who says, you know, like being an entrepreneur, it's like the buzzword of 2021, right? And she said, some of us are entrepreneurs, but most of most of the people are entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, entrepreneur. You know, I might, steal, I might have to steal that because I know a lot of entrepreneurs. That's a straight line. No, but it's true. And I think if you're an entrepreneur like yourself, you're a serial entrepreneur. Because it's like, I never feel like anything's a failure because listen, business has happened. I made millions of my business, I've lost. And I think people think like, if you have something that does great and then it doesn't pan out, like a lot of people would say, it's like, I can't do it again. And it's yeah. just like, I think that makes us do it again. Totally. Absolutely. I always say that entrepreneurs are like cockroaches and share. <laughs> like, we're never gonna die and we can never get rid of us <laughs> and, and, and i mean and once we've made the money and done something great we could always do it again 100 mm -hmm. yeah and you know like we were just saying we, we were in a thousand doors of target and that was 2008 and all of a sudden the the ground fell out in the economy and people weren't going to target for a 38 dollar bottle of shoe you know so in a year, our brand exited and we put all of our eggs in that basket. And we could look back on that 
as a devastating failure or the, the biggest life lesson that we needed to be doing what we're doing now. Yeah, which exactly. exactly, which is which is absolutely true. And you guys had your salon in the city, and then you made a choice to li to leave that as well. Yeah, and, and, and in the first years, Margaret, we had three salons. Yes, in years. So we had New York, we had Washington D.C., we had Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I, I remember was, when you opened all that. All running at the same time, and that product line that was sold at you know Sac every door of Saks Fifth Avenue. Yes, 125, 150 doors of Sephora, and it was us, you know, we only had the team at the salon that were really doing everything. And, you know, in hindsight, you know, we all learn from all of our experiences. And in hindsight, I would have done it a little bit differently. I, you know, when, when you talk to people and they say, well, there's nothing that I wouldn't do differently. Room bitch. Liar. No, I, know. Liar. I, know. Yeah, like, I didn't read any contracts. I trusted so many people. Oh, right. When people, when people throw money at you, you're like, oh, all right, because you need it, or like people want to partner with you, you're like, oh, of course, I'm going to do this, you know, and you don't think it through. Yeah, I would have done so many things differently myself. We got into a relationship where we formed a new company with an investor, and that company owned the license for the trademark of Ted Gibson. And when- I know all about this. Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with stuff like this. Yeah. It took us four years to get the name Ted Gibson back. Yeah. We couldn't do anything in beauty because we broke up with that investor and we were then stuck, you know? So there's a million they, things. They own the trademark. They own the yep. trademark. Did you have to buy the trademark back? Did you have to buy your name back? No. I think we were just um, persistent enough and um, we hired the right people who knew more than us that were aggressive legal bulldogs that... Um, eventually just wore the guy down and he just gave it back to us. So we oh, were really I mean, yeah. that's what happened to Halston. I know. Yes. That's a, that's a very famous, mm -hmm. and it happens to creatives. I think the benefit of social media in these situations though is years ago, a name was great just by itself, but without the celebrity, the hairstylist, whoever it is driving that name, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, so, so it wouldn't benefit he someone else. Done he couldn't have done anything without guys. you guys you know, behind you it. There's no train. point. Yep. Yeah, it's so true. Yep. It's so true. And I'm glad you brought him up because, you know, we've all seen that movie, that story. Mm -hmm. And the documentary. And the documentary. I mean, everything that we've seen um, as an entrepreneur, and that's exactly what he was. And, you know, the, the whole idea of how we um, pivot and shift and you know, Margaret, I have to tell you, it's, it's a te you're a testament and an example of what that really looks like. And congratulations. Thank because you. I think Thank that, you. You, know, you know, there have been a lot of people who would have said, oh, there's no way that I'm going to go into Housewives because, but you knew from the beginning what you wanted to do with that. Exactly. Experience. Exactly. You Listen, know, I had a lot of back. It's true. I had a lot of backlash because of, but I had a horrible lawsuit when I went on this show. Mm -hmm. Same thing in licensing with Vineyard Vines, one of my licenses did something. I was on the hook for, for millions. And I was like, you know, I got to reinvent myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, you know, I had, and, and I did it and it's worked, and it's worked out for me. And I, I think I, thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank God. Right. And, that's, yeah. and that's one of the things that I think is, is crucial in being a successful entrepreneur is that ability to reinvent, you know? So we reached a point in New York city where we saw the salon model changing. We saw like, apps coming up, people getting their hair done at home, uh, like a do and go kind of a thing. Dry bars. We, dry bars yeah. opening up, focusing on blow dries, keratin bars opening up on keratin treatments, um, trying to sell a product in the salon and she would pull out her phone and look online to see where she could get it cheaper and ship to her I, house. Yes, it's yes. true. And in that space at that time, we couldn't change our model. We couldn't adapt to a new thought process. We had to shut everything down. We had to leave New York. So we came to California. We took two years in California to think about who we wanted to be in the beauty business, what kind of thought process we thought was the way of the future, and then launch that reinvention. And it, if we wouldn't have left the salon on Fifth Avenue, and if we wouldn't have left New York City, we wouldn't be presented with the opportunities that we have today. And I think that's one of the things that's the most amazing part about being an entrepreneur is I'm not tethered to my 401k and my health insurance and my paid vacation, you know, like, well, 
yeah, I have to pay out of pocket for my health insurance, but everything else I get to do because I want to do it or because Ted makes me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I mean, there's the well, truth right there. <laughs> I know. Well, the, the spontaneity, and it is true when you're an entrepreneur, you know, you can just pivot easier yeah. and, and you're not tied to that. And I think you have to have a big, you know, a big set of balls just to be able to do it and that you just pick up and go and, and, and yeah. not be afraid. And I think that's really what it is. Yeah, I think it also helps when you have somebody great by your side. So how mm -hmm. did you guys meet? Because you guys are an incredible, incredible partnership. Oh, wow. yes. Thank you. To be, to be a couple and work together and survive all of this <laughs> is, is a big deal. <laughs> it's true. Yes. Um, we met because, because he really loves me. I yes. do really love him. Yes. Yes. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> we don't we don't compete for the same spotlight. You know, like from day one when I met Ted, he was always the star of the show, and he was my teacher in beauty school. So I met him as his student. Um, and I would see him like running around being like the boss of the school. And so he was always like the star and I was always the one who supported the star, you know? So I've never had the desire to be famous, but I like to be around famous people and the energy of that room. And I like them to know who I am and to come to my parties and be invited to their parties. So it's cool that Ted likes to be the star and I just get to support that and get the fringe benefits of it. Oh, Jason, <laughs> you both, baby. I, mean, I, I got that with you on all of that. That's I love it. I absolutely, no, that, that was great because Ted. That was 27 I, years ago. How many years ago is that already? 27. No. Wow, tw and you guys look so young for so two, young. Uh, you. Thank you. Yeah. I know you met so young because you guys really have no lines. I mean, that's very impressive. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. I know, no, because <laughs> it is, I think it is hard to work together yeah. and you know build a life together and be together basically twenty four seven. Because mm -hmm. we are. Yeah, through through the pandemic, you know, we've heard of so many couples that all of a sudden had lives that were twenty four seven together when they were used to working in separate places and meeting at a soccer game and having dinner and going to bed, you know? But we have always been 24 seven, so it wasn't a big deal for us, you know? Um, but I think we've had good role models, or at least I have, you know, the first salon that I worked at in Minneapolis was a married couple, mm -hmm. uh, John and Linda English. And then I also, through beauty school and building my clientele, I was a waiter and the couple that I worked for owned the restaurant together, a man and wife. So I learned a lot about what it looked like for a married couple to run a business together. So I had mentors in that without even realizing that that's what, what was happening at the time, you know? And we just like to laugh and have a good time, so that makes it easy too. <laughs> no, Although it, yesterday he threatened to throw a book at me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, needed, he, needed, he needed that beat down. Listen, I, I know what it's like, because Joe and I spend a ton of time together. Yeah, he's always yeah. running for his life. Yeah, he's always, <laughs> I, always, I always have to threaten poor Joe, you know? He, and, you know we're together oh, and, and the cute little Joe, the oh, poor oh, thing. I mean, oh, then he got wrapped oh, into this nonsense. He didn't know what was. <laughs> Well, he has stuck around. Yeah, he's stuck he around. Yes, he loves it. He loves yeah. it. He didn't know, you know, he was going to have to go on TV and do all this crazy. Yeah, but something tells me he likes it. Yeah, he, he, yeah. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> likes it. So it tells, like, during the pandemic, you decided to create Worth Up, which I yeah. just love it when I started reading about it. And I think it's so important, and the beauty business needs it. So tell me what prompted this. Thank you. Well, you know, when the when the pandemic first hit and everything got shut down in march mm. um we ted and i are really great at like keeping the machine going we're not great savers but we're great at living like an amazing lifestyle and like just keeping that well oil machined going and literally overnight everything stopped and we had no income and we had $1,200 in our bank account. Wow. And we, I especially, because I'm the, I'm the guy that worries about money between the two of us, um, I was freaking out. And I started talking about it on social media because 
people were DMing me, you know, wondering what we were doing what and how do? things what were do? What do we do? asking for advice. And so I started being really vocal about our situation because I, you know, sometimes when you reach a certain level of success in your field, it almost seems like people are afraid to approach and ask questions and whatever. And Ted and I have really always been proud of being really, um, approachable and real and sincere. And so through the interactions on social media, we decided to invite all of the best known people in our industry to a Zoom meeting. So we had 50 of the best known hairdressers, product manufacturers, um, independent hairdressers, educators, um, influencers, all in one conversation that was scheduled for 45 minutes and it lasted over two hours of all of these brilliant people just sharing ideas. And out of that came a message of positivity for our industry because there really was nothing. You know, the food and beverage industry did a great job of buy gift cards. And then it yes. was curbside delivery. And then it was, we've partnered with DoorDash. You know, so they had a unified voice and there was no unified voice for the beauty industry. It was very fragmented. And the only thing that was on the news were things like, a couple of dumb hairdressers in Louisiana or Missouri or wherever it was went to work with COVID and could have infected hundreds of people. And the beauty you know. industry is so important to people's mental health. Yes. The beauty industry, people, you know, act like it's superfluous and it's not because mm -hmm. if you look good, you feel good. I always say that it's mm -hmm. part of maintenance of your, not only physical being, but of your mental health. Mm -hmm. And, and it's so important to everybody's well being. And, yeah. and to discount it as anything less than that really pisses me off. Yeah. Because, me off too. right? Yeah. Yeah. Too. Agreed. And when people are like, oh, you know, you're getting your nails done or your hair done, it's extra. I'm like, no, I can't survive without this. I don't feel <laughs> good. No. I don't self, feel good. It's self-care. It's self-care. It's, so it's just important. as important as working out. And, mm -hmm. and, and feeling good and everything like that. We got all these people together and we did a social media campaign just sending out a positive message to the industry and it was really well received. And when it was over, we were kind of like, okay, what next? And that's when Ted and I decided that we were gonna take our 50 years of combined beauty industry experience and pay it forward. And that's when the Worth Up Alliance was born. We reached out to a friend of ours named Linnell Lynch, who has a not-for-profit called Beauty Changes Lives, which raises money to give scholarships to people who want to go to beauty school but can't afford it uh, for some advice. And she said, why don't you guys just become a program of Beauty Changes Lives? That way we can do all the, the background work and you guys can focus on what you love. And we did. And so now we have an organization that is addressing three issues that are very common for beauty entrepreneurs. Number one is lack of business education. So most beauty entrepreneurs are like me, maybe finished high school, maybe had a little bit of higher education, but really went to beauty school, became really successful in salons, started thinking I can do this better than the person that I work for. I'm going to open my own business, but have no real business experience. Like at that point, I wasn't going to go back to school and get an MBA or even an undergrad. That's a P and L, right? <laughs> I didn't even know what a P and L was when I opened my business. Yeah. Uh, so, so lack of business education, and then we also didn't have any mentors. We didn't have anyone that we could go to and say, "Hey, how did you do that? I want to be like you. What worked well when, for you when you first opened? What didn't work well?" So we're addressing that lack of uh, networking and mentorship. And then the third thing, which is probably, I don't want to say the most important, but it's hugely important, and that's capital. You know, 60% of um, beauty entrepreneurs are women and people of color. Um, it's really challenging to go to a traditional lending facility as a booked hairdresser and get a loan to open a business. Um, so we really wanted to be able to help people with that startup capital. So for the business education, we've created the Worth Up Alliance Entrepreneurial Video Library, which is a, as a $9.99 per month donation to the organization for unlimited access to interviews with industry leaders icons who have already made it, who've already started their own product lines, who've already opened their own businesses, who have already made the jump from behind the chair to celebrity 
Um, unlimited access for a $9.99 donation each month. Um, then we also have these icons and leaders donating their time to act as mentors. So when someone's ready to show someone their business plan, we have a mentor there to look at the business plan or guide you through how to even start your business plan or to figure out your point of difference or to the list goes on and on and on. So we have mentors to help these people. And then our goal before the end of this year is to raise $300,000 so that we can, uh, quarter one, 2022, start giving away what we're calling dream capital to these would-be beauty entrepreneurs. Yes. I love this so much. I, I, I guess so I never important. thought about the beauty industry and the way it was set up until I started reading about Worth Up. And the industry itself is set up for people not to be able to go out on their own. It is a very lonely place. Like you work behind your chair. You don't want to ask your salon owner for advice because they don't want to lose you. You don't want to mm. take your clients. It's a very difficult place. It's not like going to your boss and like a, a major finance firm and saying, I want that promotion. It's a very mm -hmm. hard navigate yes, with relationships. So I love that you guys have done this. It's you so probably smart. set so many people free. I mean, that's the goal, thank you. you know, thank you very much. Thank and that's a, that's a really great um, analogy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there isn't anyone to go to and say, I'm ready. I'm ready for the raise and the raise being opening my own business. You yeah. know, thank you for that. Oh, you know, you put it in a way that I, I've never thought of before. Like, you know, anytime that we've had businesses, salon specifically, it's always been about making sure that we can help the guy or girl who works in the salon and, you know, we encourage them. Or the they, them, them. Or they, them. Yeah. To, to think about how I, we could help them raise their prices because, Raising their prices is something that some hairdressers really don't want to do or beauty professionals want to do because they're afraid they're going to lose that client. There's some kind of like, you know, uh, stamp saying that I'm booked six and eight and 10 weeks in advance when you don't necessarily have to work that hard. You can raise your prices and not be book, be five weeks in advance or four weeks in advance. Yes. Rather than yeah. 10. You know, so we don't, so we always in our businesses really try to encourage hairdressers to think about it differently. And that's why Worth Up is, Alliance is really there and why we created it because we want to be that place, that resource for salon owners, independent stylists, makeup artists, uh, estheticians, nail techs, barbers, a place where they can come and get mentored and then eventually get capital for their businesses. And just to add on to that, you know, we're focusing on beauty because that's where we grow up. We mm -hmm. grew up or we're growing up, I guess. Um, but these interviews in the Entrepreneurial Video Library are a valuable resource for anyone wanting to open a business because we all need to know how to write a business plan. Yes. We all need to know how to network. We all need to know our point of difference. We all need to hear how this little girl on the lake shore in Georgia felt her feet breaking through the clay and how the clay on the outside was dry, but wet on the inside. And that inspired her to create the first clay-based hair lightener for balayage brought to the market. That then since every manufacturer around the world is copied. You know, we need to hear those stories as entrepreneurs about like nothing, something, you know? It's and true. And where, people, and where people start and get their ideas. And it, it is so inspirational. I also, people always think success um, and like yourselves, they think we're all loaded beyond belief, right? And yeah. it's just like, because we both achieve such a level of success. And it's true. It's just like people think like you don't worry about money. Like it is like feeding the beast. And because I like, I'm the way you guys are. I'm a decadent spender. <laughs> you know, you know just, <laughs> And you know, we like to live and it's a well-oiled machine. But you know, I'm the accidental entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I didn't have a good role model growing up, you know, from a Hungarian immigrant mother. And no one does teach you. So I think that's what's so important as well. You know, it, 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 don't you agree? It, it is yeah. so true. It's just, you know, because things do happen and, and things change and, and everything else. And mm -hmm. I think people look at you guys or look at me and it's just like, oh, well, they have everything. We're very blessed and, and we can always make it happen and, and we can figure it out. But that doesn't mean 
you know, that we're sitting on, you know, a boatload of money at all times because things change very quickly. And that's true. One day we're eating ribeyes at Mastro's and the next day we're eating beans and rice in our apartment, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're looking good yeah. while doing it. I'll tell you what. We always look good. We're always looking good. I'll look where we're <laughs> We had our uh, we had our nieces and uh, our niece and nephews out at our house in Palm Springs, and I was floating in the pool with my niece, and I was talking about being an entrepreneur. She was seventeen or eighteen at the time, and um, I said, you know, sometimes we're rich and sometimes we're not rich. And I said, but the the key, the real trick is, and I was like, are you listening, Sydney? She said, I'm listening, Uncle. I was like, always look rich. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's a great question. You know, right now I'm working with a product called Bright, which is a demi-permanent uh, fun hair color brand. You know, they do um, pastels and violets and, you know, uh, also more shocking colors, but they last like one or two shampoos. So it's like a really fun way for people to go into the drugstore or Target or whatever and bring something home that's going to give them a big impact without a big commitment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the trick for like the caviar look on the tuna fish budget <laughs> is finding things that are going to give you a nice wow factor without a big commitment. You know, like um, we talk about all the time, I'm sure you've, you've discussed like mastige, you yes. know, so yes. the, yeah, the that's premium my, that's product. Yes. Yeah, the premium product at the CVS you know, um, I worked with P&G for a while with a contract that I had, and I got to sit in on discussions about Olay. Mm -hmm. And the technology and the R&D that goes into those products is equal to, if not better than, Chanel. Yes. You know, it's like the, 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 the goods are there. You just maybe need to look a little bit deeper to find them to get those results that give you that caviar sort of finish, you know? No, I agree. I absolutely yeah. And what are the biggest trends in hair for 2021? Well, I think that the biggest one right now um, are bangs, of course. Yes, yes, bangs. I put my bangs down. I, I, I love, I love that you have them a little softer to the side. Yes, I, yes. I love that. I think that that's really beautiful. Um, I would think the shag um, is back in a big way. Uh, the mullet is back in a big way, but I think what's cool about the mullet. What's cool about the mullet now is that it's all about the texture. It's not a straight mullet. It's all about the texture. There's a, a girl that I love and follow. Her name is Esther McGregor. And Esther is really rocking a really cool mullet at the moment. She's Ewan McGregor's daughter, uh, up and coming actress. Um, I've cut her hair several times. She's really amazing. So check out her mullet because I think her mullet is really cool. Okay, good. Um, I like that. Color wise, do you think? Color wise, I mean, it's still about, I think we're moving away from the silvery kind of blondes and moving into something that's a little bit more weedy, a little bit more, um, a little bit more natural kind of looking. Um, it's still really fun to play with those um, non traditional hair colors. The pastels, I think, are really strong. Um, I think that bolder placements. So we've been seeing like a lot of stretched out root area with lighter ends from that balayage sort of technique, that beachy sort of thing. Seeing a stronger placement with maybe, um, you know, there's a lot of that bi color, that bi tone happening where underneath is a different color. So when you pull it up, you see a pop of color. When it's down, you see something different. Uh, bolder pieces with the highlights. I always think of like Cindy Crawford in the 90s. She had those really big blonde pieces in the front of her brunette head of hair. Um, those kind of things, I think, are really current and modern right now. Can we say Kelly Clarkson? From I mean, Iowa we're not going. We're not going as bold <laughs> and stripey as Kelly Clarkson circus season one. Uh, <laughs> but yes, yeah, seeing bolder placements, I think, is really interesting and cool right now. What do you think of all these women? And I always bitch about the girls. 
girls on my show and I always tell them, what's with the extensions down to the vagina? The hair extensions. I always say it's so aging. Like I'll wear hair pieces a lot, but I'm never doing permanent extensions down to my vagina. Yeah. 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 I think that that moment is, uh, I think it's, for me, it's been over for a while. Yeah, me too, me too, um, me too. I'm like enough, right? Yeah. And I think that there's something that's very, um, like, expensive number one yeah but it's almost like <laughs> hiding under a blanket you know and it's almost like there's something like i think of carolina herrera you know who's super chic she's always had shorter hair it's always off of her face confidence and that to me is confidence you know where that really long hair is almost like hiding under a blanket Okay, I'll I feel about it now. I love women with like statement hair, like a Linda Fargo or a Helen Mirren, where they have that like just chic, always chic, short, mm -hmm. fabulous yeah. power. And I, and I do love the mullet because that's also a statement hair. Yes. I love a statement. Yes. Mm -hmm. a statement mm -hmm. hair. But that excessive extensions and the, ugh, I'm like, enough already. No, I can't. It's, it's, it's such a housewife move. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really so, is. And I, and I always say, yeah. I'm not doing it. Oh my God! Have you? Uh, they just put out a new season of Love Island in the UK. Oh, we're watching. Oh, we're the American one. <laughs> oh, I I love the English one, and they now have this new thing. They all obviously have the hair extensions, like you've ne like pounds and pounds of hair, like you've never like twenty twos, like pounds of them. Wow. But now they have these weird bikinis that go oh. under wire, but just with nipple covers. I'm like. Reality TV has ruined so many industries. It's ruined the hair industry and now the bathing suit industry at this point. I'm like, Love Island is responsible for a lot. Yeah, love it's it. absolutely crazy. It's terrible. So wait, you're still doing your um, meringue hair, right? That yeah. meringue, because I have it upstairs. Marty yeah, yeah. loves the meringue, because that's yeah, good for my hair. Fine so hair. Good. You know what? I've used it on just about every celebrity I've worked on, from Deborah Messing to Lupita Nyong'o to I just did all the press with Jordana Brewster for uh, Fast Nine, which is really fantastic, and um, a Madeline Klein who is on a new Netflix show that's uh, season two is coming up. What's it called? Uh, <laughs> Outer Banks. <laughs> 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 all right. I, I want to call it something else, but it's called Outer Banks. Outer Banks. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, yes. I actually watched that show and I enjoyed it. A Dude, lot. Yeah, Madeline Klein. She's so fantastic. Yeah. Great, great, great girl. Yeah. No, the meringue. I know. I have it. I used it. I used it the other day. My mother loves the meringue, so I called the the meringue. And it, what's the one that smells really good? Is that the meringue? No. Something else smells really good. Mm -hmm. Big and coconut and amber, all that combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It smells good. Yeah. Yes, but it works well. It works well on my hair. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to make sure because my mother sent it over to me, but I know she was like giving me leftovers or something. Oh, please, like, please give her my love. Yeah. I will. Mart Senior. Yeah. Mart Senior. Yeah. Very good. Yes, yeah. because she was like Ted Gibson's meringue is so good. <laughs> all right. The Ted Gibson meringue. I was like, all right, good. So we ask everybody these questions. What was like your guys' big girl panty, big boy panty moment where you're like, shit, what am I going to do? You know, what's my sink or swim? You know, this is my big girl panty moment. I mean, you've had endless big girl panty moments, but what do you think is your biggest? <laughs> um, well, I think for, in my, in my life, it was, I was working for Aveda on West Broadway in the salon there. And that was a great job for a hairdresser because I had the 401k, I had the healthcare insur uh, insurance um, and benefits for both Ted and I. And to leave that job and open a salon on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, being a couple of guys from Minnesota that have never owned a business before, um, that was the moment where when we first got the keys to that building and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm unlocking a building on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan because my business is here. That moment sort of like defined the next or the rest of my life, you know, from going from being an employee to being a boss was a big put on your big boy pants. Yes. And I think that that that, um, that shift, that real paradigm shift, is what set us up to be able to open up then a salon in DC and then a salon in Fort Lauderdale and then have the courage to say, this isn't working the way we want it to and shut it all down and leave the city that we love the most. Like, 
I appreciate LA and I'm happy to be in LA, but I just, we were watching the um, documentary about, or the movie, I guess documentary about the guy who's the designer at Belmont, Balmain, wow, Balmain. I want to watch that. You know, we have it's to watch really that. It's a little self-indulgent, but it's good. And they were showing like scenes of New York City and I was like, Oh, we're feeling homesick. Yeah, I love New York. But I also know that to do the things that I want to do, I, I can't live in New York, you know? Mm -hmm. And so at that moment of getting those keys and unlocking that door for the first time, is that's when, like, my view of work and who I am and all of that changed. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, I will say um, the in 1994, I had the opportunity to go to Milan to do um, fashion shows with um, a mentor of mine, Eugene Solomon. And I remember walking in to Miu Miu for the hair and makeup test. And that season specifically, we did Miu Miu, Prada, Dolce & Gabbana, Straness, Animal Inari, and we did like eight or 10 shows that season. And it was the first time that I had ever been in that kind of environment. And it was the moment that I knew that that was the next thing for me. And that going from being an educator and being um, teaching students how to cut color hair, blah, 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 into what fashion is, that was the moment for me. And I can tell you that it, <laughs> it was remarkable. It was remarkable when they showed us. Remarkable. Oh, I, I, I would, oh, I would die to be doing that. I mean, uh, yeah. That's just so magical, right? I just, like, magical, right? I just, really just to be like, there like, with all those creative and people. And the 90s was so, so great. The movement so fashion yes. at that time was so it was. great and so it strong. Was. Yeah, it was. So, you know, it was when, you know, there was uh, this group of, not the supermodel, the supermodel was kind of finishing, but it was these group of girls, Kate Moss, mm -hmm. um, Maggie Reiser, Erin O'Connor, yeah. uh, the two Russian girls. You know, there were these girls that were really on the covers of Italian Vogue and French Vogue. And, you know, it, it was just this time that was just like unmeasurable. I love those girls because they were like the soup models had all the glamour, but those girls had the edge. Yes. The edge. It was the edge. Karen Elson, Karen Elson. Oh, yes. How did I, how did I forget oh, Karen? Karen? Yes, Karen. Karen. Oh, that for me. <laughs> we, we just don't have that anymore. No. Right? It's just, well, the whole industry has changed so much, you know? Like, we have that now, but they are influencers. Yeah. You know, yeah, so we, but it's not, and there's 20,000 of them. And there's 20,000 of them. 20, yeah. Of them. yeah, it's not the same. And you yeah. could just, I'd say it. I mean, I still buy magazines. Yes. I still buy all my magazines and sit in my bed and, yeah. Kate Moss's daughter. Have you seen Kate Moss's daughter, Lila? Mm -hmm. She's out now. Um, she's making quite a name for herself. She's a little scandalous, but she is gorgeous. She is like mm -hmm. Kate Moss Next Generation. She okay. is stunning. Really? But I hope that, but again, it's like she has, she doesn't have the same platform that her mom had to like come through Vogue and stuff. So it is, it, everything leans a little bit more influencer driven. That's true. Yeah. So, for better or worse. So we always say the Marge's success is 50% delusion, 50% <laughs> determination. <laughs> How do you weigh up your percentages? Well, I'm definitely a visionary and I'm definitely um, outside of the box thinking, you know, I have a morning practice where I meditate and read and write for a 50, a, try to do 15 minutes of each. And it's so funny because this morning was really in my meditation and reading was really about that, about um, not knowing where it's going to come from, but knowing what it is that you want. And that illusion, if you will, is what we have to stick to. Because if I stayed in the spot of wondering where is it going to come from, then I would never create anything. I, yeah, That's I so agree. True. I always say, I always say, people always think when I ask them this question, like, oh, is delusion a bad thing? I'm like, no, like, because if you don't believe your own hype and, and that it's going to happen and that it's capable that it, and feasible, it's never going to happen. Yeah, the possibility, the possibility. Yes. So um, I may change that percentage a little bit more to like 70 del delusion. <laughs> yeah, 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 because it's, it's, 
Like, <laughs> yeah, because like, yes. look at where you come from and where and where we where you've gone, right? That's what I always say. And you. I mean, my mom is ninety, and she still says, Mark. She says, Junior, because she calls me Junior. Junior, she's Southern woman. Junior. <laughs> That's how that's how it is because she still can't understand how I did it because I was a kid that you know was athlete and then when I finished um, doing playing football I would come home and be in my room I was never anyone that she felt like that would go to an extreme of being the most expensive haircut in the country and to open yes. salons and product and working with celebrities she would have never ever thought that so she has that question what is the and I think that both of our moms have this idea that because we're not standing behind the chair all day, every day, or because we're not going to an office every day, that we're not working. Yes. You know, hard time <laughs> yes. Understanding like what we're, I even have a hard time understanding what we're doing because we're so, um, right now, especially coming out of COVID and all the shutdowns really, really extreme in California, the, um, yeah, it was much big, yeah, much bigger. Yeah, probably the worst for our business specifically than any place else in the country. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of time to really think about like, okay, so when we get through this, who are we going to be and what are we going to do? And so through the whole pandemic, we were really trying to focus on manifesting what we were going to do after it was over. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, we we came to California, we opened the world's first smart salon with a completely polar thought process to any of the salons that we've had before. And that's been open for two years now. And we're already like, what are we going to do next? I know, I know, <laughs> I know the feeling. I know exactly. Yeah. I know people always say, you work at your house, you have your staff in your house. Does that really work? You know, or, or just say, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's really work. Or like, oh, you're on a show. That's not work or, you know, whatever. Oh, I'm like, yes, work. that's work. Yeah. I know, people, same kind of thing. I know exactly what you're saying. What would be your most entrepreneurial advice to anyone listening to this episode today? Because we, we always say we are like grit, optimism, real. I would say get used to people telling you no and it's not going to work and somebody else already thought of it. That's very None of it matters. And keep going. Yeah. A friend of ours says, no doesn't mean no. No no means not right now. Yes. No means maybe later. No means keep asking. Um, another friend said, uh, you know, it's not who you know, it's what you know. No, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And to me, that's like, if you, if you don't know the right people, you got to meet new people. Oh, the people that that you're right so right. You're so right. You're so right. I agree. And also being really clear about what it is that you want, because I think people have a tendency um, to kind of, you know, be really flounder about what it is that they want. And I think that that's one of the things that I think has been my success is I've been very, very, very clear about it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't stop me. I move to the next. And if that doesn't work, I move to the next. You know, if you ask Oprah how many things worked and didn't work, it would make, it would make your head spin. Um, Everybody in the in the world knows who Oprah Winfrey is because she didn't start. Yeah, she didn't. That's start. what it is. It's the failures. That, it's not the, the the successes that define you. It's how you handle the failures. I think is is what it is. Sure. And I'm glad you said failures. I'm glad you said failures because some people like to say, "Oh, well, you know, it's it's, it's a, a learn, or you know," but it's not. It's a failure, and it's okay because people fail. And it's all in, like you just said, of how you deal with that failure that makes you stronger and moves you forward. It's true. To that. So tell everybody where to find you. Our friends and followers, you could direct them to worthupalliance.org. Okay. Um, yes. And we have all the information there. If we're looking for people to be mentors, we're looking for people to uh, contribute their time to the entrepreneurial video library by doing uh, interviews with me. We're looking for sponsors. We're, we're, we need to raise that money so that we can help these on this. While the pandemic has closed, so many businesses, 30%, 30 of 60% of businesses that have closed will never reopen. Um, on the other side of that, it's an incredible opportunity for new entrepreneurs to find spaces to bring their ideas to life. So we really need to raise that capital. So uh, don't hit the donate now button, hit the recurring donate button so we can count on those year after year that would be great 
No, I think that's so important. And then obviously follow you a Ted Gibson, follow you a Jason Becky. Thank you so much. I love the the work of lines. I think it's so smart. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Bye guys. Bye. Oh my God. How much do I love them? I love them so much. I mean, it's just like full circle. That was my yes. first very expensive. I mean, I've had expensive haircut, but that was my first very expensive haircut when Ted gives. And I'm just going to say it was $900 for a haircut. I remember it well. And Joe was like, um, all he was counting, $10, $20, every hair strand. It was so funny. But your hair looked That amazing. was my first amazing, amazing haircut. And you felt amazing. I felt amazing. He was just, the way Ted makes you feel, just his voice is so soothing in general. Yes. And I would go to the salon, and my first uh, PR person told me to go there. And he was just magnificent. He was, and he's still magnificent. And, he is, he, and his personality is amazing. It really is. And I is. think I love the honesty and upfront nature of the conversation. Like Jason and Ted were honest. You know, like you're not always sitting pretty in life. Something like a, a pandemic comes, or you know, like if you own a salon and you have a flood and you're not properly insured, like something can take you out at any given moment and, exactly. you're, and you're not prepared for it. And I love that they want to help other people in the beauty industry Yes, because no one taught them. They learned all by themselves. Yeah. They've created an unbelievably successful business, but they've, you know, would have done some things differently. They've made mistakes. So this worth up Alliance is so amazing. There's so many people in the beauty industry. I hold the beauty industry dear to my heart because I would be lost without it. I mean, who would even yeah. look at me? I'd look like hell. <laughs> And it is self-care, and the beauty yes. industry has always looked as superfluous, which is not. No, not at all. It's it's so needed, and I think they could help so many beauty entrepreneurs, from everybody to hairstylists, to makeup artists, to estheticians. Yeah, and to- opening that honest community conversation, which I'm, you know, it's a very competitive industry. So not taking away the competitive element, but opening up a community where people lift and support each other to help each other grow, as opposed to try and like knock each other out. is something so valuable in that industry. Yes, I absolutely love it. So I think this was such, I hope you guys are so inspired because I think this was such an inspirational, yes. entrepreneurial, raw and real from unbelievable superstars in the beauty industry yes well everyone you know you can find new episodes with us every wednesday at caviar dreams tuna fish budget. caviar dreams tuna fish budget that's us hope you enjoyed this one and you can find the launch at the real Margaret joseph's me at the life of mrs b and on instagram follow caviar dreams tuna fish budget and my bag collection don't yes. forget about that don't forget it and you know there's always a copy of the book how to survive in business and life and look, you're surviving so far. Yeah, I've so survived so far. She's a glowing advertisement. Literally I'm glowing. glowing I'm literally the glowing. From literally the glowing. What possessed you? Have a great week and keep dreaming. Keep dreaming, caviar dreamers. Yeah, no one.